So every six months or so, I decided I should do an update video on all the exceptional people we've covered on this channel. Do like a season one roundup. Because often enough, most of these sagas are ongoing. YouTube's kind of like an autistic version of Netflix. You binge watch and then you have to wait a whole year for the next shitty season. Don't take offense to that though. Life's way too short to take anything in here on YouTube seriously, especially from my channel. Plus, I've gotten the MNR vaccine when I was a kid too, so we're all in the short bus together. So we're going to start with Charlie Zelenoff the goat and Blahino because they're fresh in our minds. And we're going to end it up with Chris Chan because a lot of stuff has happened since February in that department. We're going to save that one for last. I understand some of you aren't going to be interested in all of them, so I'll throw down some timestamps for you guys as the pinned comment. And just a heads up, not a lot has happened for some of them, so there are going to be a few small updates. So Charlie Zelenoff. A lot of people alluded that there was more to the story to Charlie Z, and yeah, in a small way they're kind of right. A very small way, let me explain. Early on, Charlie was actually working with a few people. I mentioned before about a promoter and how his father helped him set up some fights by paying the fighters for their time, but he also had a trainer. But most importantly, he had a publisher to help him with his videos and his YouTube channel. I don't know when his trainer ditched him, but Frank ditched him after the Hartley rematch. And he had a falling out with his publisher in late 2017. Their relationship ended when Charlie accused him of stealing all his YouTube revenue, which was like $100. It wasn't a lot. Claims that I stole money from him. Uh, Charlie has all the account information. It's his. All he has to do is look at it. Besides the random t-shirts he'd sell, which he sold right out of his apartment, this wasn't a very lucrative deal. But it was, in a sense, a bit of a scam. See, his publisher wanted to have a channel like Charlie Zelenoff Uncut, where they could use that as the main source of revenue. Um, and all he's doing is posting the raw footage, uh, which is what I was trying to tell you uh, to begin with. Some people actually think that's what's going on right now. They think that Charlie owns the trolling channels, like Charlie's Ellen Up Uncut, Hello Fellow Haters, they think he's worked with Tempo, and that this is just a whole publicity scheme to make some money off views and revenue. See, that would be a pretty good scam. Charlie acts retarded to get attention, people seek out his unedited fights and meme videos while secretly he reaps in the revenue. And I think this almost happened. It's not what's going on though. That would mean that Charlie prioritizes money over his tough guy image. And I just don't think that's the case. I think Charlie's tough guy image is the one thing he does care about. Plus, I don't think this guy is that capable of 40 level chess. They're both clowns just like you. You're a clown. If I hit you in the ring, you know what would happen to you, Kanye? You would become a vegetable for the rest of your life, and machines would operate you for the rest of your life. Therefore, I'm superior to you, regardless of how much money you make. Regardless of your financial success, I am better than you. Because I'm the greatest boxer of all time, and I deserve Kim Kardashian. She's the one for me. Come on, look what I'm, look what I'm writing on Facebook. It's quite obvious. To be honest, I think his ex-publisher runs Charlie Zellin off uncut. Completely out of spite. Or he at least supplied some of the footage to them. He denies it, but there's only so many people that would have access to the uncut footage. Uh, Charlie, I am not Charlie Zelenoff uncut. Uh, I contacted this guy because he's growing his channel a lot more than you are. And at the time, he was the one doing all the uploading and editing. That's why Charlie's full fight with Dijon didn't surface till late 2017, when it actually took place earlier. I think Vince just said fuck it because Charlie was talking a lot of shit, and because he wouldn't stop, I think he just went ahead and did it himself. What leads me to believe this is Charlie blames Vince for ruining his channel, but he doesn't really elaborate. If you go to Charlie's OG YouTube channel, there's no videos. There are actually videos there though. They won't show up in most browsers, and I actually only stumble across them because for some reason they show up in my PlayStation 4 browser, but they're still unwatchable. And yeah, of course I tried a VPN. They're blocked in all countries, and they're blocked by 3 times champion. And that's Charlie's original channel name. So his videos are blocked by his own account the account that Vince had access to. But that's all just my own retarded speculation and a bit of back lore. I do know for a fact Charlie isn't good with computers. You can see how he records his computer screen and uploads his videos through his phone. My speed and power proves that I'm the greatest world champion of all time, but check this out man, look at how many different countries watch my fights. And that's because he doesn't have internet hooked up in his apartment. That's why he uploads everything to Instagram because it's right off his phone and uses data. Or he goes to his homie Alex's place. I'm pretty sure Alex is the person helping Charlie, or he just lets him use his Wi-Fi. I'm still not 100% sure about that. But an actual update since my video, I found Charlie's official Twitter a while ago, but I don't believe he runs it directly. The only platform I know for 100% that Charlie runs himself is his Instagram. So I popped into Z Money's stream a few times to see what's up. You know, you don't really know someone until you see them live. I wasn't there for long though, but I did notice that any mention of Mike Seal or Tempo gets you immediately blocked and declared a delusional hater. 
They don't talk about those two. They broke the illusion. Charlie also does have actual fans that believe his shit. Most are just enablers trolling, but there are a couple people who actually believe him. Charlie's also been telling everyone that he's moving to the Ukraine to live with his new girlfriend, and that he's leaving very soon. I'm leaving the country to, to be with my girl, so I gotta give as much as I can. I, I'm leaving the country. I assume. Like, really soon. Luckily, before Charlie laid the pandemic block on me, I was able to ask him a question. Would you like to see our conversation? Pff, of course you do. But before I show you, let me explain my ultimate conclusion in regards to Zelenoff. And then I'll let you guys decide. So I think Charlie's little freak show has basically been exposed for what it is. He doesn't have a driver's license. He can't travel out of state. He can't go to LA Fitness and sucker punch anyone because he's been permabanned. He doesn't have any funds to pay anybody any longer. I don't think he even pays his gym memberships. Remember, he trains in his apartment building laundry room. And he can't talk shit either because Mike Seal and Tempo have exposed him in his own town. So our boy Charlie has only one thing left to do. He's heading back to the mother country. Where no one knows him and he can start this whole thing over again. Or... Okay, uh, well, we'll see you tomorrow. We owe him, we owe him, right? 20? That ain't shit. Okay, but tomorrow, tomorrow we'll call him. Tomorrow we'll call him, alright? Hit me, uh, hit me back. Tomorrow we'll call him. Bye. Uh, These people are sick, man. Like, when I talk to my girlfriend, it's all positivity, man. These faggots just run down now. Screw over a drug dealer? Motherfucker, I'm going for my girlfriend. No, I didn't screw anybody over. I'm paying him tomorrow. The fuck? This dude's terrified of me. His hands shake when he, when he gives it to me, man. I'm leaving for a girl, you idiot! Fucking swear to God, what's wrong with these fucking people, man? Yeah, that, uh, that could be why he's leaving. Either way, my video still stands. Charlie is a delusional scrub. Case closed. So as I'm running my script for this very video, I've just come across this. Our boy Hemingway has come clean about his days as a private military contractor. I'm not gonna say I influenced this, but I feel like I may have had a small part. And the video is gold. Uh, there's rumors all over the internet as to which branch I supposedly claim to have been in. I didn't. I actually specifically said I have never served in the military and there's no record existing of me having served in any military anywhere on earth. Right? Very clearly said that. But that kind of gets missed in the, in the whole legend, doesn't it? With the way people spin this stuff around. That it forced people to fill in the blanks and people have created this enormous legend that they just joke and troll about based upon my original trolling and i'll get to how you guys should be able to determine it was trolling that's right guys he wasn't lying about the last 20 years it was a troll for attention i feel like this has been tried before twice actually but coach i i, I don't understand if this was a troll this whole time why did you flag down channels that uh that contradicted and criticized you if this was a master plan, why would you freak out and strike those videos down? Aren't they helping perpetuate your troll? Your big scheme? Your plan to stand out? Why, uh, why did you abuse the copyright system and false DMCA strike other YouTubers, huh? For the funds? Fuck off. Jason shall forever be known as backpedaling Blahino. I'm sure it's got nothing to do with his bullshit story being exposed numerous times. That's not even all though, guys. No damage control plan? isn't complete without playing the victim. Like I had no idea people would spin it in the direction of veterans or the military. I actually had no clue. Historically, I actually have stood up for veterans on this channel. I got veterans sending me death threats. And you guys know how that started? Because it got spun in the direction when I made up these things about being a hit man. Hell, let me run with it, this'll be fun. And it didn't turn out to be so fun. Uh, all things considered, I've got a lot of death threats. We've had bomb scares, bomb squad, stuff like that. But, you know, that aside, that aside. And here's the problem with that. Uh, and the reason I didn't make a big deal about a lot of that, because I'm actually really concerned in what I've said in the past. I'm concerned, again, as a conservative, I'm concerned as a Second Amendment advocate that 
what some politicians want to do is to just declare veterans with PTSD as dangerous. They want to strip away their rights. They want to take away their right to own guns. And then we have veterans doing stupid shit like this because of stuff they saw on the internet. Are you guys seriously? Uh, we're at a point where you guys need to be fighting for your rights. Makes total sense. It's the veterans fault for not recognizing your claims and threats as jokes. For all these guys who are veterans who are standing there still screaming about your valor, stolen valor after what I just told you, that that sounds like I'm stealing any of your valor. You know what? Fuck you, kid. You can go fuck yourself. I don't really care what you think. But I will tell you this. If you decide that you're going to come confront me physically about it, you better not be a fucking pog. You better be a stone cold killer. Because I don't flinch anymore when I hear a rifle round come by my head. When I hear that and that snap of that sonic boom, I haven't flinched in 20 years from that shit. I got over that a long time ago. So if you come at me, I want you to know, son, it's not going to be me who goes in the ground. I'm still here. I thought Blaha was a compulsive liar. Now I'm convinced he's actually mentally delusional. The only other place I've seen this level of disconnect from reality and denial is from the Flat Earth community. That's where Blaha is now, at the kids' table with the Flat Earthers. And, well, I'm calling his bluff. I'm addressing Blaha directly right now. I'm sure he'll stumble across this eventually. So I make my videos for me and my subscribers. I'm sure they've all seen my video. I'll take it down. One of my best performing videos. I'll enlist it if you put your videos back on public. All your videos you made supposedly trolling. Take them off private. Don't re-upload them somewhere. You said yourself you have them on private still to prove people were taking you out of context. There's actually no record in any of the videos, uh, which I've actually kept on private on YouTube. I had never actually said I served in any branch of the military. Plus, it's all a joke, right? I'll take the L, Blaha. I just want to see the master troll in action. Raw, unedited. I haven't seen those videos in full in years. Show us the originals. You have them. Apparently, I'm spinning what you said out of context. Well, the problem is that oftentimes I would stop in the same positions over and over. And that allowed people to remix my videos. And it allowed people to change my videos to get me to say things that I didn't say or to chop them up and omit things and people to really think that their version of the video they put out was the real version of my video. You know what would help with that? If you relist the originals. Yeah, I bet that's not gonna happen. So let's recap this, because I must be missing something. So Blaha pretends to be a hitman for attention, gets called out on it, and as a result his family gets threatened, his reputation gets ruined, so he doubles down on it for the next four plus years, all the while trying to flag down anyone who criticizes him? But like, what's the end goal? To become the most uncredible fat guy in the fitness community? And where are the retarded ones for thinking he's delusional? What the fuck is wrong with you? That's not even what actually pisses me off about Blaha. My personal issue with them is they don't really care about the whole liar thing. I've seen that hundreds of times. What I have an issue with is him being a greasy scumbag false flagger. If you're familiar with Mundane Matt and the situation he's currently going through, ask yourself one thing. How long do you think Blaha's flagging history is? I bet you my fucking YouTube channel, his list is pages long. Way longer than Matt's. How many YouTubers do you think Blaha's falsely striked? I personally know of three whole channels he's taken down. Countless videos. Fuck, he just struck a video down on Everyday Damn Fitness last week. Blaha's lucky a small nobody like me made a video about him. Because if, say, someone else did... Uh, John Marston, please check out John or Jason Blaha, the lulls. His stolen valor shit would be the last thing to worry about. Blaha wouldn't want that little dark corner of the internet taking a deep dive on his past. I really don't see how he thought that video was a good idea. His core audience already knows he's full of bullshit, and new viewers are just gonna end up seeking this other stuff out. I get what he's doing. He's trying to get ahead in case he's brought into mainstream light again. But it just utterly destroyed any little kind of credibility he had within his own community. Fuck it though, who cares, right? That's a meme channel now. Get this done. I'm gonna get that peg bounce going. Alright, first question. Don't be surprised, here we go. Do, do, do. You know what it is. Do, do, do.
Glock City, bitch. 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 Glock Glock City, bitch. 10, 10, 10, 10, 40s in the 45, bitch. Bitch, break yourself. Bitch, break yourself. Okay. Glock City, bitch. Glock City, bitch. Glock City, bitch. Get this done. Gonna get that pack bounce going. All right, first question. There's a not so well known saying in the Genova verse that applies to Blaha nicely. Those that swim in Lake Crevessa shall eternally reek of piss. Meaning, once you're exposed as a lying sack of shit, you're always gonna be a lying sack of shit. Plain and simple. Anyway, next on the list is Wings of Redemption. So Richard got a surgery, but let's just say it was a little cheaper than advertised. Wings used the rest of his donation money for his mortgage. I never donated to Wings, so I can't say whether or not the hate is warranted. You'd have to ask someone who donated to him personally. Tell him to screenshot that shit to you, third eye laser. By the way, you're getting banned now. Anybody that pushes that shit for, because I've, I've gave that motherfucker like eight times how to get his shit refunded. He hasn't done it yet. But all the extra money Wings had went towards his host and other shit. Some of his donators have actually threatened Wings with a class action lawsuit. I'm not sure if this was just to get a response out of him, so we might have to check back on this in a couple months. Wings has managed to lose some weight, but it's done absolutely nothing in regard to his issue with people trolling him. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I don't want to play video games. I don't. And every time I come on here, I got people accusing me of being a homosexual. I got a guy telling people that he'll pay people to fucking team kill me. I can't play by myself. So then I have to go through and invite people. No, my mods aren't even fucking work doing their job. Like, li literally, Dash, where the fuck are you? Like, why aren't you banning these people? Mainly because it's like what everyone thought. It's mostly Wings' attitude that's the real problem. Actually, I think Wings has gone on to evolve into a full-on DSP-style entertainment. There was a brief window, but I think he's far past the point of no return now. You need to get a fucking life. That's what people need to do. They need to get a life. You hassled me because of surgery. I was getting the surgery from the time I started taking donations. It had nothing to do with you. Not a damn thing. People hassle me because of why I'm not losing weight at, at the rate they want me to lose weight at. People hassle me because I'm losing weight too fast. People try to tell me to not listen to my nutritionist. Listen to their fucking gym, bro. There's even a Discord server dedicated to spreading the great name of Sean Ranklin. And even more recently, a nice new subreddit. Shout out Sean Ranklin. Wing still mentions his plans on leaving Twitch and YouTube and returning to school, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. Look how long Wings put his surgery off. He's a massive procrastinator. And it's a pretty shitty situation because Wings is just bleeding subs at this point. I was gonna go lay in bed and I noticed I lost 30 subs, so I'm like, I better stream to see if I can make some subs back up. I don't feel like playing video games, so I figured a couple hours in real life he can get me like 5 or 6 subs back. The best thing anyone could do in Wings' position would be to leave Twitch he needs to take a month off, drop his whole Twitch channel, and start streaming on YouTube. He needs to embrace it 100%. He needs to play Call of Duty, unmoderated chat, he needs to set up Streamlabs with TTS, get a Discord to start 1v1ing people. I'm, I broke my controller. You broke your controller? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep fucking laughing, you fucking faggot. Oh, wings, I think oh. you are. Oh, okay, don't fucking days. suck. Think about it. I watched a small channel, Stream Wings is stream from Twitch on YouTube, and it was pulling in about a thousand live viewers. Wings has a huge channel that's just sitting there. If I was him, I'd say fuck it and start raking in those super chats and text to speech. Christ, he could even set up little emotes like a little KFC bucket, a little black dude for brandy, even a little bottle of Pepsi, or soda as you Merkins say. There's a high demand for quality Wings freakouts. Just think about it money wise for a second. An unmoderated Wings of Redemption livestream on YouTube would pull in some crazy numbers. You could even take it a step further and get his old mods to just screen some calls, take calls from viewers in Discord. There's some money to be made here in that. See, it could be something similar to Buddhism Hotline, but more genuine because Richard is actually a real person. Look here! Look here! Look! Listen! But I think that's something that Wings isn't actually capable of doing since he considers his channel with half a million subscribers pointless at this time. Because it ruins my fucking life. That's why. It ruins it ruins my sex life, it ruins my future career, it ruins everything. 
People that go to see me now look at me as a joke on the internet. Why? Because I got mad a few times. All right, fuck this. Sub only mode, please. Man, if there's anything you can take away from this, it's Sean Ranklin makes a shitty wingman. Oh, Jason. Okay, so people think I just make fun of Jason. I'm actually secretly a fan. Don't tell him though. I'll be honest with you. I watch my fair share of Jason videos. Well, n not every video. I'd be brain dead. Two weeks till the Olympia, mother. Vegas. Looking forward to sweetheart? Game Goblin. Gonna have a fun trip. Come on, J come, come, Jane. Game banging Jane. Gang banging Jane. But I watch a solid two hours of Jason content a week. Since we've last talked about the Piss Lord, he's went on to ascend to full YouTube celery. Order 66 for Sidon for being a candy ass and not collabing with the Lord, Sam Pepper, and all their social media, Twitch, Instagram, YouTube. Jason also started selling Order 66s. Making me think it's a great way to initiate a YouTube crossover. Oh, Janoy. When he's not doing that, he's back to refining his force powers and putting his haters in their place by doing a little bawling. Nature boy, Rick Flarenin. High profile and strofiling. Woo! Pretty sure that money's fake, though. I doubt Goblin Game Jane would let Jason carry anything more than $50 at once. Jane has Jason on a very strict allowance. I got enough fucking gas to go to the fucking gym this morning. I had trouble getting gas from people. I had to ask my fans to help me out. Thank you to my fans. They got me enough gas to get to the gym and to back home, all right? Or he's secretly blowing all his money on lightsabers and Burger King. If it wasn't for the Misfits, I think Jason would be right up there with Chris Chan. They keep Jason grounded somewhat. So for the most part, Jason's been behaving. I think Jane gave him an ultimatum that he had to be good or she wouldn't let him go on a trip with the other misfits. Unfortunately, to everyone's surprise, this is actually causing the Mints to be at an all-time low. And thus, the Force must be realigned once again. There's a bit of a hierarchy and cycle in the Genovaverse. See, Genoi is the maker of the Mints. Rick Flaring, Rich Piano's Last Scoop, and other clipping channels sift through and spread the high-quality Mints upon the Genova Witness. And some of the hardcore fans want to see Jason in all his glory, so they travel to Florida and party Tony Montana style. So today, tonight I'm going out, got my bling bling watch, got my bling bling clothes, looking a scar face tonight. It's sick, it's pissed with the watches, sickening, pissening, pimped out baby, revolting, insulting, woo, nature boy. Which also allows Jason to leech off them. It's a symbiotic cycle. I'm somewhere in the middle there. That's the kind of cool thing about Jason. In all seriousness, there aren't a lot of YouTubers you can just message and take out for dinner. Sure, you're gonna have to foot the Burger King bill, but it's still pretty cool in my opinion. Sometimes though, Jason does a little too much leeching, and there aren't enough high quality mints being produced to keep the balance. When Jason's extorting laziness hits its peak, it's up to the bringers of the mints to declare an unsubbing. And the Genova Witness temporarily unsubbed to scare the shit out of Jason. This is the third mass unsubbing I've witnessed. And yes, that's not me being dyslexic, it's called an unsubbing. Embrace the iron toenail in all its glory. Don't rip it, don't rip it. Just keep clipping. Oh my fucking god, you, look at how you hold that thing. I couldn't find a single thing for Lorne. I'm not sure if his probation officer completely restricted his internet access, or maybe he's moved out of his trailer park and got a job? I'm not sure. If you're a passing TCAP member, feel free to fill me in in the comment section because I actually couldn't find anything of relevance. So we got a couple things for base Russell. When we left off, Russell had one ongoing lull suit with the state of Utah in the name of all incels. He started this suit after he was robbed in Nevada where they have legal brothels. Apparently one of the nice girls there robbed Russell for $4,000 and now he fears going back resulting in him being forced to resort to illegal prostitution. Yeah guys, that's that's Facebook for you. It's cancer. He was also threatening to escalate his previous failed lawsuit against Taylor Swift to the federal level. Okay, so first off, Russell ended up losing his suit against Utah. So if you're unaware of Russ, 
I'll fill you in on the lawsuit stuff, you're gonna have to check my other video for the whole story. So Russell was suing the state in an attempt to change the laws on prostitution. He even wrote a book about it. Anyway, the judge threw it out, dooming all Utah incels to a life of masturbation and resentment. Who would have known the judge doesn't give a fuck about Russell's sex life? That didn't deter Russell from escalating his lawsuit against Taylor Swift to the federal level after it was thrown out last year in small claims court. Here's a post of Russ talking about it after he lost. And to think, all this started because Taylor wouldn't use Russell's fan-made music or work with him. The multi-million dollar lawsuit is still ongoing so I'll have to wait to see the results. Russ is easily comparable to Maddox in the court department. If you're into lawsuits and the legal aspects of YouTube, I highly recommend checking out Rakita Law. He's an actual lawyer and he breaks these cases down so they're easy to understand. I'll link him in the description, he's pretty entertaining. Next up is Big Lenny. So I mentioned before that Lenny didn't really have his own form of social media, and as soon as he did finally get one, someone sent his little Pornhub escapade to his employer and the poor bastard actually got fired, which is really scummy. Whispers on the internet are pointing to Big Doc's fitness as the culprit. Stop the shit! I have kids! Oh, me stop it? What? How, how am I getting in control? Fucking text me all the shit all day long! Stop it! Who's texting you? Guys you came over and you sent them to your big fucking uh, the wires around their house! If the trolls uh, sent sent a box, let's stay in bath. Let's see here. I didn't do anything. Why are you putting me part of it? Yes, you did. Your name's on everything. My name's on everything. How's that? Explain Stop that. Stop it, John. Stop it. I was going to do a video on the rise and fall of Big Rob, but I don't want him to call the FBI on me. My sister's a fucking attorney. And what? the fucking FBI. Stop it. He was exposed as a doxer and a liar, and he just generally lacks humanity. It may come, though. We'll see. Lenny's still a huge part of the Misfits podcast, so there's that at least. But come on, messing with someone's workplace is fucked up plain and simple. Especially considering Lenny wasn't doing any form of self-promotion. He gained notoriety just from being in other people's videos. But I guess the lesson you can learn from this is nowadays no one's really safe on the internet. So Steven John Asante. So Steven got his surgery and lost some weight. And uh, sit down because uh, he actually got married. Yeah, that's right. This guy got married. There's mass speculation about being everything from a complete fake to she's catfishing him. Some say she's with him for the drugs. I don't know for certain. But what I do know about Asante is he's an attention whore. And if he's not ranting and raving on social media, there's a reason. I think he's trying to get back on TV in some weird update video or something. It doesn't matter though, because he will be forever remembered as the fat guy who lived in a van down by the river with a bunch of pizzas. I did manage to find an interview some shitty website did with Steven's wife. But as it turns out, it was Steven pretending to be her. I don't know, the whole thing smells really fishy to me. If you see him on TV again, you know I called it here first. Whew. So now we're all the way back at the beginning of this channel. So when I first talked about Chris Chan, he was in the middle of his long running Financi saga. Hello everybody, Christine Chandler coming to you live from home once again and the mortgage payment is really due tomorrow and we have to make two month payments this month and we need, un we need like $200 so please, get on eBay, buy this set! Which I don't ever see ending. Just to catch those up, over the last year or so, Chris has been taking the e-begging to the next level. He begs for money on Twitter, tries to sell his sticky toys on eBay for retarded prices. It was also brought to everyone's attention through leaks at Kiwi Farms that Chris was being influenced and manipulated by a guy named Josh, which is why his comics were a little Hitlerish for a while. Chris continued to act stranger and stranger, He dropped his homophobia completely and became bisexual. He was also trying to get his fans to pay for his trip to the Too Many Games convention. I also read that Chris was in a polygamous relationship for a while, but I'm not sure if that's just made up in his head. It's very hard to tell what's going on as it unfolds here with Mr. Chandler. And seeing as most of this information comes from Kiwi Farms of all places, means you have to take everything with a grain of salt. Even shit the owner says. Chris was able to raise enough funds to go to the convention, and it was actually fairly lucrative for him. And now for our final story, the legend of Chris Chan. He made it into the mainstream light again. They asked him to leave when he was getting a little feely with people there.
This actually gave me nostalgic feelings of the Sonic Boom days. Don't call anybody. <laughs> So Chris took full advantage of this flood of new attention and started fundraising for his next event, the BronyCon convention at the end of July. So this is where things started to get a little weird. And like I said a minute ago, when you see something from Kiwi Farms, ask for receipts because this shit sounds a little crazy. So the owner of Kiwi Farms puts out this huge notice claiming that he found out in the last few months Josh the idea guy who was influencing Chris a few months back came back with one of his friends and ended up extorting Chris for thousands of dollars. And there are some receipts for that. The two are fairly well known on the website also. So they are real people. But how were they able to extort him you ask? Did they have something on him? Well, no, the owner of Kiwi Farms claims that they cornered him into Discord, convinced him that he had CP on his computer, and he was a pedo. I'll say that again. They convinced Chris that he had CP on his computer and were able to extort money off him. Null also claims that they made Chris punch himself in the face and hit his mom, but I can't find any footage of that, and he's not putting any of the videos out. None of this makes any sense, and it's given me a real Pizzagate feel. This is on Infowars.com. Pizzagate is real. Like, if you want me to believe this story, I'm going to need an audio leak, a Discord leak, I'm going to need something from Chris himself, because it just doesn't add up. I highly encourage you guys to form your own opinion about this, if you even care because at this point there are no facts. So I don't think that's even the worst part about Chris Chan's whole situation. See, Chris and Barb are mostly estranged from the rest of the family. And when Chris's father Bob was alive, he's the one that kind of kept Chris under control. When he passed away, Barb just became a complete enabler and Chris and her feed off each other. Their spending has got so bad that Barb had to get a reverse mortgage to consolidate her and Chris's consumer debt. Just take a look at Chris's room. There's toys everywhere. Where is he going to put them in a few years when Barb dies? Chris doesn't get the house, the bank gets the house. If everyone thinks the financial crisis is bad now, don't wait till Chris is on his own. He's going to have to sell a hell of a lot more of those blankets to get by. My name is Barbara Chandler. I'm asking you to uh, help us with the uh, car payment uh, by buying the blankets. Uh, they're nice, they're in perfect shape, uh, they'll make a good addition to your home. Thank you for helping us. I appreciate it. All men. I find a lot of people coddle Chris, and I'm not one of them. Chris is the kind of person that'll get away with what he can. And I think people close to him need to start being tough with him. Stop enabling him and drill into his head that he needs to smarten the fuck up, go see an actual therapist and get assessed. Because if he believes half of what he says, he should be in a home, not taking care of an elderly mother. Because Barb obviously isn't in the right state of mind either. I don't know. I just find it hard that someone can't actually differentiate between the difference between cartoons and real life, but can then go get a driver's license and open up a Patreon and an Amazon account and capitalize off a situation. I don't know, that's just me though. Anyway, that's all I got guys. Thank you all for your support, your ideas, and your contributions. I wouldn't have gotten this far without you guys. I can guarantee that. I'm going to be making a few small changes, trying a few new things in the upcoming weeks. But the core content's always going to stay the same. If it's something fucked up and it's funny on the internet, we're probably eventually going to talk about it. But yeah, thank you guys again for your support, and I'll see you next upload. This, I'm on blog TV with my fucking hands up. I'm not starting my fucking self. You fucking stupid bitch. This stupid fucking justice. Uh, uh.